to gather this morning here to worship him. Those who are online, you are watching us on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Our joy is to have you watch uh, our service today. We worship God together. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are in thy presence this moment. We want to worship you. We want to honor you. We come unto thy presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. We pray that, Lord, you forgive us all that we've done that can make you not listen unto our petition today, O Lord. We are in thy presence and we pray that, Lord, your presence and we, you manifest yourself in us, O Lord, this morning. We worship you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Our reading word today comes from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 14. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God and told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Amen. I take this moment to invite the praise team so that we can worship together, praising God. Can we all stand up, please? We, we praise together.
mari wewe mwenye nguvu na uweza iwe oh akupewa sifa akupewa sifa na utukufu na heshima Cool. 
We thank you because of your doing. We thank you because of many things that, Lord, you have done to us. I believe each one of us, those who are here and those who are at home, uh, viewing us through the online platform, we know each one of us, we have things that, Lord, we can praise you for. We are so grateful and we thank you because you are so wonderful in our lives. We thank you this morning, even because of this opportunity, Lord, that, Lord, you have given us so that some of us can gather here and others can sit at home and listen to you. We are praying that, Lord, this morning, the burdens that we have in our hearts <clears throat> are going to be lightened. The things that, Lord, we are finding them to be so difficult, Lord, you are going to make them easy for us. We thank you because we know you love us. Difficult things may happen, but we know that, Lord, you are still in control. And that's why we are so grateful this morning, having confidence in you, that, Lord, you still love us even at this time. We thank you for our families, Lord, at home. We are praying that, Lord, you are going to bless us. You are going to bless the man of the house, the challenges that are there. We are praying that, Lord, you are going to give him the ability. You are going even to strengthen him and so that he can be able to overcome them. At this time, when there are so many things going on, we are praying that, Lord, you are going to do great things to that man. You are going to do wonderful things so that he can stand and place you. Despite the challenges, we thank you. We thank you also for our mothers, the wives that we have. We pray that, Lord, you are going to bless them. Even, the, even at this time, maybe challenges are there, but we know that, Lord, you are, uh, you, are, you are working through them. You are going to strengthen them in a special way. You are going to work through them and so, they, so that they can be a blessing to their family. We know that, Lord, in those families, there are children. There are those who are grown up. There are others who are quite young, Lord. And all of them we are praying. That Lord, even at this time when there is, taught, there is confusion, some of them don't know when they are going to open the schools. Some of them have stayed at home for quite a long time. We are praying that, Lord, you are going to give them peace. You are going to give them hope even at this time. And you are going to work through them and so that they can be a blessing to that to the family. We thank you for everything. We are praying for peace in those families. We are praying for prosperity in those families. We are praying that, Lord, you will continue holding their hand and walking with them. And so that, Lord, even at this time, they will still count your blessings because they have them. We thank you and we praise you. We are praying even to, uh, this morning because of the Ministry of Education, Lord. At this time, they are at a time when they are, going to, they are supposed to make a decision. And we know that, Lord, we are praying that the decision that will be made regarding our children is a decision that has come from you, Lord. It's a decision that has been guided by you. And so that we can have our children going back to school and learning well. We thank you for them. We are praying for them at this time. Because we know that, Lord, they are facing it at this time. But we know that when you are there, everything will be easy and possible. And that's why at this time, as a church, we are remembering them. That, Lord, you are going to guide them. That, Lord, you are going to walk with them. The decision that they are going to make is not a decision that has come from them. It's a decision that has come from above because you are God. We thank you for everything. We know at this time there are people who are lying in hospital beds because they are not feeling well. We remember them in a special way. Any disease that they are suffering from, we know that, Lord, you have the power. You have the power to heal them. You have the power to do many things to them. We are praying that all this time you are going to, to stretch your hand to them and you are going to do great things in them. We know those, those people, they have families at home. Some of them have difficult, have, they are having challenges with finance and they are not able even to pay for the hospital bills. We are praying that, Lord, you are going to remember those families. Some of them are children who have been left at home by their parents. We are praying for peace and we are praying that, Lord, you are going to do great things in those families. Wherever they are in the hospitals, bless them. We know there are people who take care of them in the hospitals. And recently we had an issue of some of them going on strike. We are praying that, Lord, you are going to give them a heart. You are going to bring all the stakeholders together. And so that they can work out issues and those people will continue working. Because at this time there is great suffering for those patients who are in the hospital. And there is nobody to take care of them. Lord, we are praying that, Lord, you are going to do great things. All the people who are involved, 
Lord, give them the heart. Give them, Lord, even the desire to sit down together and agree on issues that, Lord, they are not able to agree at this time because you are God. We believe that you are going to do great things. At this time, you also know there are children out in the street. For us, we are protecting ourselves with the mask and many other things. These children do not have masks. These children do not have sanitizers. These children do not have a place to sleep. We are praying for them. That, Lord, you are the God of them. You are their parents. You are the one who is taking care of them. You are their sanitizers. You are their mask, and you are going to protect them. We pray that, Lord, you are going to protect those children out in the street. And so that, Lord, they can continue living. Some of them, they grow up to be, uh, to be people who worship you. We are praying that even where they are, that, Lord, you are going to reach them. And you are going to do great things to them. We thank you because you are God Almighty. We thank you for everything. Continue working through us. Continue working to us. We have parents who are at home. Some of them are aged at this time. And we are praying for them. That, Lord, even this time where you are having challenges in this country and in the world, that, Lord, you will also walk with them. We thank you for everything. We know that during this period there are people who have lost their loved one. We are praying that, Lord, you will continue walking with them. You will continue guiding them each and every day. And so that, Lord, they can feel your presence. Despite having, uh, having a gap, we know that, Lord, you will fill that gap. And you will continue guiding them in all the ways that, Lord, they are doing. At this time also we have churches where we have challenges because we don't know how will people come back to church. Some people are not yet, Lord, having confidence to come back. And we are praying that, Lord, create confidence in us. Give us the desire now to start gathering to come and worship you because you are God. There are guidelines that we have been given. And we know that, Lord, when we fulfill all those guidelines, we will be able to gather and worship you. We are praying that, Lord, give us the courage. You are praying that, God, you are going to give us ways. You are going to guide your church. And so that, Lord, we can start gathering together and worshiping you because you are God. And that is what you want. You want the, uh, a fellowship of believers. And even for those who are sitting down at home, listening to, to you, we pray that, Lord, also you are going to give them peace. Give them confidence because they are listening to your word. We thank you for all of them. And we thank you for the membership of this church. We thank you for the leadership of this church. That, Lord, you are going to bless it. In the decision, the Lord, they are going to make. Some of the decisions are difficult. But we know that, Lord, when you are there, we'll be able to make decisions that are guided by you. This, this decision that the Holy Spirit has taken charge of. And, Lord, these are decisions that you want. We thank you because of the promises that you have for our lives. Individually and as a church and as a nation, there are things that you have promised us. And we know that, Lord, when we live according to your will, these promises are going to come true. Even at this time, you're not going to lose hope. We know that, Lord, there are things that, Lord, you have mentioned in our lives, individually as a parent, individually as a child. There are desires that, Lord, we have. We pray that even at this time, we are having hope in you that those decisions will come true because you are God. We thank you for everything that, Lord, you have done. Thank you for the leadership of this country that, Lord, also even at this time, give them wisdom. Anything that, Lord, they are doing, the decision that they are doing, anything the Lord they are doing, we know it will affect us. It affects everybody, including the children. We are praying, that's why we are praying that, Lord, you are going to take charge. Those decisions that they are making, they'll be guided by you. You are the one who will guide them. You are the one who will convince them. And so that we can have a very good decision, decision that, Lord, will help this country. We thank you. Today, we are going to listen to your word. And we are praying that, Lord, that one, the giver of the one, Lord, you are going to guide him. The giver of the word, we are going to get the word that comes from you, Lord. Him, you are going to use him as a vessel to give us your word. And we are praying that, Lord, you are going to use him in a special way because you are God. Bless him as he gives us your word. Help him, Lord, to give exactly the words that comes from you. And for us who will be listening to that word, let it change our life. Let it change the way we see things. Let's change the way we talk. Let it change even the way we look at the things, Lord, in day-to-day -day life. We are praying that, Lord, will be blessed. For those who are sick this morning, when they listen to that word, let the healing come to them. For those who are having any, many other challenges, when they listen to that word, Lord, it's going to change them. It's going to give them ways of being able to overcome those challenges. For those who lost their loved one, 
When they listen to that one, let them be encouraged, Lord, and let them see you and see your hand in everything. We thank you for everything. Bless us as a church and bless each one of us because you are God Almighty. And Lord, we pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father who is at heaven, Amen. your will be done on others in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who grasp. God bless us, man. for there is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our announcements today are as follows. Let us continue obeying the instructions of the government as we pray for the healing, our nation, and the world. The church appreciates all kinds of support received from our members towards the needy in our church and the community allowed. For continued support, kindly contact. Our phone number is 07152. 96586 or bring your donations to the church office any time of the day. We appreciate the continued support of the church ministry through giving of our offerings, tithes, thanksgivings, uh, project, project, uh, branches, and other donations. All checks should be in the, in the name of PCEA Dome Church, Equity Bank Kasalani, Blanche, and our account number is 0260-2966-250068. Pay bill number 247-247, and account number is 646 7 Nine zero. It is on our screens. You can get it from our screens and uh, you can support the ministry through those numbers. Kindly note our gathered worship services are as follows. First service begins at 8 a.m. and the second service begins at 10.30 a.m. We urge you to register for the service through this number star three zero four star one six ash star three zero four star one six ash all members are being reminded to visit the church office for biometric registration we appreciate those who have already done it groups are also reminded to find names and contacts of the elected leaders to the church office. Because our God is light, we have faith that we will see light. Amen. We have marriage bans. There is a purpose of marriage between Erija Bogua Kagiri of Rangeways Baptist and Sharon Wakonyo Kenothia of PCA Dome Church. If no valid objection is raised, the marriage will be ceremonized on 23rd October 2020 at Safari Park Hotel at 10.30 a.m. May God bless these who are about to begin their home. Yours in Christ service, Reverend Andrew Furi, Polish Minister. This is the first announcement on 4th October 2020. May God bless you. Uh, good morning. This time we're going to have our reading and it's coming from uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, 1 to 15. And I lead. 
Now Naman, now Naman was commander of the army of the king of Alam. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Alam. He was a violent soldier, but he had leprosy. Now birds of raiders from Alam had gone out and had taken captive of a young girl from Israel, and she, dis she served Naaman's wife. She said to her, Mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king, the king of Alam replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking him with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of cloth, clothing. The letter that he had took to the king of Israel led. With this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel led the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of the Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, Go, wash your Self seven times in the Jordan, and, wo and your flesh will be restored, and you'll be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. I'll not Abana and Papha, the levers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. Could, couldn't I wash in, the, in them and be cleansed? So he returned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do so, some, to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he, call, he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clear, clear, clean like that of a young boy. Then man and, Naaman and his attendant went back to, God, to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. Those are the words. May God bless his word. Amen.
us pray. Loving God, we indeed confess that in our weaknesses, you are our strength. Thank you even for the words in that hymn that ask us, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, just because we do not carry it to God in prayer. You are our friend in our strengths. You are our friend in our weaknesses. And therefore, Lord, as we hear your word, we pray that where we are weak, you shall make us strong. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. I'm in a good distance. Um, the ones in front of me are far. The ones beside me are far, so when I remove the mask, especially for the online viewers who get very concerned, just know that I'm absolutely within uh, the health protocols. Very delighted uh, to be in this worship service today, and God continues to work good things in our lives, even in difficult seasons. It is good to know that once we expect, once we commit ourselves to God, all things are going to work together for good. Because we love God and we are called according to his purpose. Therefore, you have a reason to anticipate, you have a reason to expect from God. And sometimes desperation comes in so many ways. Difficult things come in so many ways that we feel like we are surrendering to the difficulty. But once we are in God, even in the most difficult of times, even when Shadrach and his friends were thrown in the fire, they still found God in the fire. Therefore, in all seasons, let's keep our hope in God up because he is working. Sometimes he works visibly. Sometimes he works behind the scenes, but he is working for us all the time. And would also want to appreciate all of us as a congregation for the way that you have continued to support the ministry of the church. When we are now gathered, when we are offline as online as well, you have continued to be part of the worship experiences, and we want to really be grateful uh, to you and we pray that even through this time when we've been online and now we're beginning to gather that we shall continue to grow in the grace of God. Talking about growing, we want to uh, acknowledge that uh, you know, they are what we call COVID romances, you know, uh, romances that are happening during the COVID time and we've just announced right now the uh, wedding of one of us, Sharon. And I'm sure she's here. Sharon, are you somewhere? Oh, yeah. Just stand, Sharon. Let's uh, just stand. Uh, is Elijah with you? Great. Yeah. That's a COVID romance right there. <laughs> and they're about to begin their home. And may God bless you abundantly uh, in Jesus' name. Thanks for, uh, for coming. And we will continue to support you in every way. God bless you. So God is doing good things in our lives. And this has been a season that has really reminded us as individuals, as a nation, as a world, as institutions about our weaknesses. And we are beginning a new series here at Thome Church uh, that is called Strength in Weakness. We're going to be having this series in October through November, Strength in in weakness because God's strength is made perfect even in weakness therefore what we look forward to even though we feel that there have been a lot of um, difficulties going on the last word is not weakness the last word is strength and not just strength but God's strength made perfect and that's our prayer that even as we share God's word during this season, that we are going to experience uh, the, the, the strength of God in our lives. And today we will look at the account of Naaman. 
Naaman as a general of the armies of Syria, of the armies of Aram, we find that he was struck, uh, even in his greatness, by a great weakness. And that's why we title our reflection, our Sunday service sermon today, The Grounded General. And as we do that, uh, we know that God is going to speak to us in a very real way. Now, weaknesses. You know, when you mention weaknesses, no one needs to struggle so much to realize that it is a reality of life. You know, you mention the word strength and you quickly begin to imagine your own strengths. Now, you mention the word weakness and you begin to immediately list the weaknesses that you have because weaknesses are as strong a reality as our strengths. Weaknesses. Now, no one is exempt from the area of weakness. As long as you are a human being, you will have your set of strengths. You will also have your set of weaknesses. Different kinds of weaknesses. Now, there are self-made weaknesses. Self-made weaknesses. For instance, I remember uh, some years back when I was in high school, and uh, uh, at some point in the, my journey in high school, I, you know, you, you, you usually will have a particular position. Let's say, um, like our parents. Our parents were always position number one. There's no parent who was number two. Every parent was position <laughs> number one, for one reason or other. Anyway, I had a particular position uh, that was very consistent. And the teachers knew it. And uh, even the headmaster of the school knew it. I was always in that uh, position most of the time. And then, all of a sudden, during one set of examinations, I dropped 15 positions. Like, that is a shock. Let's say you are number five. That is your zone. You drop all the way to number 20. And because the, the, the teachers cared, I remember the headmaster calling me and asking me, what is wrong? What is the problem? And for sure, I knew what the problem was. And I told my headmaster, I know what the problem is. I will fix it. And within the next set of exams, I had shifted 12 positions up. Because I knew it was a self-made weakness. There are weaknesses that are self-made. But there are other weaknesses that are actually incidental. Weaknesses that happen to you, not because you have any contribution in them, but they come at you. Take for instance, when you are really driving at the right speed in the, on the road, you are on the right lane, your car is in perfect shape, it has just come from service, you service it, you know, uh, as, as frequently as should, and all of a sudden, a car comes from a different direction and smashes your car and reduces it to uh, like a, a very a mangled piece. Now, it is not your doing. You are on the right track, but something came and just thrust you into a situation of difficulty. When the Israelites were punished by God, both the good Israelites and the bad Israelites were taken to exile because the, the good ones suffered the, 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 the evil of the ones who were disobedient. They had incidental uh, weaknesses, so we may say. Weaknesses that came to them not because they wanted to, not because they manufactured them, but because other people who were in that cluster had them, and so they suffered uh, from that. And so we find that there are weaknesses that are within your control. There is something you can do about them. There is something you can do about them. But there are also others that you are absolutely out of control. You are stuck with them. They are what we can call almost fixed liabilities. You are stuck with them and there is little you can do. They have become part of your story. 
and you cannot remove them because they are part of that. And now because we talked a little bit about um, uh, romances, uh, talking about weaknesses that are stuck with you, there was one a gentleman who uh, really was interested in a particular girl. And of course, you know, the gentleman will work very hard to make sure that the, uh, the girl is uh, what we call an angia box. Is that? That's the language, right? They work so hard. They, they, they think, they spend, they do a lot. Uh, and then, of course, in the course of the conversation, there always comes a time when this question is asked. The girl asks, is there anything you think I need to know about you? You know, you are being told now if there are significant things about your life that I need to know, please let me know. Now, this guy, he was a fine guy in every way. But somewhere in his history, he had spent five years in prison. You know, there's nothing he could do about it. So he told the girl, I can do everything about everything else. I can adjust everything else about my own life. But I cannot run away from the fact that I spent five years in prison. So you love me or you, or you hate me. You know, it was stuck. It was a liability that was stuck with him. There was nothing he could do about it. It was part of his life. He was really out of control in terms of what he would do about that experience in his life. There are private weaknesses. Private weaknesses that no one else knows. Weaknesses that are only known to you. You know, and sometimes we find in scriptures, angels, you know, getting into spaces of people who are thinking particular things. For instance, if you look at the life of Joseph, he was thinking in his life uh, how, to, uh, how he is going to uh, uh, let go of Mary. But the angel came and interrupted that thought. It was a private thought, but the angel came and interrupted that thought because there are things that happen in private places that only God knows. We also find many times Jesus Christ correcting the disciples, telling them, I can see what you are thinking. Though they have not expressed it, Jesus knows they are thinking it. Jesus knows they are meditating it. And so there are those private weaknesses that we have, but there are also public weaknesses. Weaknesses known by everyone, weaknesses seen by everyone, weaknesses that are talked about by people because they are displayed already in public. Weaknesses, we all have them. And they affect us in, a, in, in different ways. Because weaknesses are such a stubborn part of our lives that they affect us in very specific ways. For instance, a weakness will affect your personal identity. Whom do you think you are? Think about Moses, for instance. He has a huge assignment before him to go and rescue the children of Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. But what does he say? He says, I cannot speak. He also says, I have a history. I am not able, to, I'm not the right person, whether in terms of history or in terms of my capacity to express it. I'm not the right person to be the deliverer, to be the, the one bringing people out of uh, Israel, out of, out of Egypt. We find that his weaknesses uh, affected a lot his identity. And weaknesses do affect our identity quite a lot. We also find that weaknesses oftentimes become zones of shame in our lives. You know, I have in mind the story of, of Hannah who was very, uh, in a very distressed place all the time because of the weakness that she had uh, within her own system. We find that she was a lady who was constantly in pain and constantly in shame because of that state. Because weaknesses do sometimes translate into a sense of shame. Also, weaknesses become our areas of struggle. We struggle, we, we strive, we, we do all that. And, and it's interesting because Paul makes this dilemma very clear. Paul says, the things I want to do, I do not do. 
You know, and the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And he cries out and says, who will help me from this dilemma? And of course, he gives thanks to Jesus Christ who is able to help him in the struggle. So weaknesses become our areas of continuing struggle, continuing strife. But also we find that weaknesses become inhibitions. They become uh, zones of limitation. And I have in mind a servant of God like Gideon, who thought he was the smallest of the smallest. And so when the angel comes and tells him, rise up with this strength of yours, he is like, what do you mean strength? I am the smallest of the small. And so we find that in his uh, weakness, he had also gotten a vision of life that was limited. Weaknesses. Now, I do not know what you do with your weaknesses. I do not know what weaknesses you face. I know the weaknesses I face. But it's interesting, my sisters and brothers, and this is the good news. This is the good news that Jesus came into the world not because of our strengths. Jesus came into the world because we are weak. Jesus came into the world because we are weak. No, Mary is told that you shall call your son Jesus, Yeshua, because he will save people from their sins. Therefore, the weaknesses that sometimes put us in a crisis of identity, in a crisis of shame, in a crisis of struggle and limitation, these weaknesses are the same that are the attraction of God in our lives. Praise be to God. They are the attraction of God in our lives. God enters into your life. God enters into my life through the door of weakness. Now it's powerful also to remember that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit has been sent to help us to move from the space of the flesh to continually embrace the fruit of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is conversant with your weaknesses. The Holy Spirit is conversant with my weaknesses. He is conversant with my weaknesses. And that's why when you talk about the Holy Spirit, the Bible always says, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Meaning that every crevice, every crack, every experience in your life is filled by the Holy Spirit. And from that point, you begin a, you begin a journey of strength. A journey of strength made perfect, even in our weaknesses. Now, Naaman was familiar with weakness. The weakness actually showed on his own body. Because he was leprous. So there's nothing that he could, it was what we can call uh, something he was out of control of. It was a fixed liability that he had. It was not something that he had exposed himself to. It just happened. And so he was in that place where uh, he was daily confronting a weakness in the form of a disease in his body, on his body. Now, he was a commander, a commander of the king of the armies of Aram, the armies of Syria. And so even in his bigness, even in his high status in society, weakness still leaked through. You know, one of the things that, um, uh, that, that Solomon talks about, about the things that amaze him. He talks about how he is amazed by the lizard because the lizard finds itself even in the king's palace. So we find that even though he was high in the society, a weakness still was able to get into his life. He was a commander, big man. And also he was not just a big man, but he was valued. He was valued by his master. Because you can be in a big position doing great things, but it's also another thing to be the right-hand person of the king. And he was that kind of person. He was highly regarded, the Bible says. He was highly regarded. And through him, a lot of victories were won for the nation 
of Aram from the nation of Syria. And it's good for you to know that, that, that Aram and, 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 and the fights it had, some of the fights actually were fights against Israel, which is going to come out shortly because in this same country that was an enemy is the same country that uh, Naaman found his healing. He was a valiant soldier. And one of the things about soldiers is that they have to be fit all the time. I hear about those people who go for, uh, for, for, army, for army or police recruitment. That if you have a broken tooth, you can't make it. Is that correct? If you have a broken tooth, you, you can't make it. If you have a missing tooth, you, you cannot qualify to be, to, be, uh, to be in the army. You are told you ran very well. You, know, you are the right weight. You know, you have, you, have, uh, you have the right height. In fact, you, have the, you are, have the right qualifications. But sorry, you have a broken tooth. And so you cannot qualify. It's interesting when you think about it. But a soldier is supposed to be in perfect health. But here we find that Naaman has a bout of leprosy. And this disease becomes what we can say his main weakness. But he had some other weakness as well. And as far as God is concerned, it seems that the second layer of weakness was bigger to God than even the physical disease. Because he had a problem with pride. This person was proud. This person understood class. This person dealt only with the high right? He had a big problem and so we find when I read the, mass, the, the passage, I find that God addressed more his sense of pride than even his sense of physical wellness. It's like God was more interested in his heart even more than his physical disease. He, you, God used the physical disease to actually heal the real disease that was in him that was the disease of pride. Now, Leprosy was really disturbing him. This, this physical condition was really disturbing him because he takes the servant girl seriously. You know, he went to see the king himself about it. He carried great gifts uh, to the prophet who was in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Israel. And he was angry when the healing did not happen immediately. You know, and also we find that finally when he, is, uh, uh, he, was, he, was, he was persuaded by his servants that he actually changes his mind and chooses to obey. It's very interesting when you look at this life and the pride. Uh, he had physical, uh, uh, physical condition on one hand, but also he had the internal condition of pride on the other. Now, Look at how he does it. Now, he is, the message comes from the servant girl. And instead of responding to the servant girl so much, he decides to deal with the king, right? He is a person who deals with, with, with the high. And then also when he goes to see the prophet of God, when he goes to see the prophet in, um, uh, in, uh, in Israel, there's a particular, uh, there's a particular uh, load that he carries. He carries many, many gifts. He carries uh, gifts of all kinds, precious gifts, because he was used to being part of delegations of, um, uh, of high of high of officers of the state. And so he carries uh, great gifts, precious gifts to go and give to Elisha. We also find that when Elisha tells him which river to go and dip himself into, he says, ah, uh ah, -uh, there are better rivers. There is Abana River. There is Papa River, which are more gracious and, and more beautiful than River Jordan. So we find that he has a sense of deep pride within him and God works a lot on that. God works a lot on that. And how does God work on that? It's interesting that God uses rather weak, you know, weakly things or people who are regarded to be lowly to handle the case of Naaman. As we have mentioned, first it begins with a servant girl, a place not of strength, but a place as far as uh, 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 Naaman was concerned, a place of loneliness. Then it comes through the wife. 
And we know how the, uh, the women of the time were regarded in the society at that time. So again, we find that the message comes through uh, the wife and not through him, his own direct revelation. Then he is sent, you know, to the prophet of God in, a, in, a, in Israel. Israel is a country that is, of course, foreign, but also sometimes an enemy. Because even the servant girl had been captured from Israel. So he is sent to enemy territory to find his healing there. Then he finds a, 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 a gentleman, a, a prophet who is not interested in seeing him. That is Elisha. He actually sends a messenger. You know, it's interesting. Elisha sends the messenger, Gehaz, to go and deliver the message to Naaman. And Naaman is very offended by this. And as if not uh, the, this, this, this interested prophet is not enough to just deal with that, we find that he tells him to go and, and put dip himself in a dirty river. And then he says, no, he's angry. His pride is making him walk away from his healing. His pride is telling him, no, 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 I can't handle that. Now again, his servants who are lowly are the ones who persuade him. They're the ones who tell him, if you had been asked to do greater things, you would have done them. Therefore, please do this as the prophet has told you to do. So we find that his condition is addressed a lot by people who are lowly in terms of the way he would regard them. It's very interesting when you look at that. And also, we find that God is dealing with his pride. I feel strongly that why God told him to dip seven times in a dirty river, you know, was again to, uh, healing could have happened quickly. But the pride, the pride was so strong that he had to dip himself in a dirty river seven times by the instruction of God. Naaman, Naaman we find that he finds his strength. He finds his strength. He finds his strength by, uh, for his weakness uh, by the power of God. And I love the fact that he decided finally to commit and to obey the instruction of God. Because as we saw earlier, that once you commit your weakness to God, God is familiar with our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit of God helps us in our weaknesses. And therefore, for Naaman, it could have been strange. But for God, he was waiting for that weakness to land on his table for him to act, for him to act on it. And then Naaman got more than just physical healing. He also got healing from his pride. Now when you look at that account of Naaman, you find that there are wonderful, wonderful lessons that we learn from here. That God desires that your weaknesses come face to face with his grace. Therefore, don't stay in that place of shame. Don't stay in that place where you embrace the weakness as your own. God is waiting for you to table your weakness and it will come face to face with his grace and his grace will win the day. We also find that even though the weakness is so stuck or looks so fixed with God, it is movable. Hallelujah. With God, it is movable. It could look stuck by you. It could look one that you even has, have embraced as your identity. But once you lift it up to God, it is movable. Hallelujah. Naaman's weakness became movable even though it was fixed on his own body. And even, 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 even when God ministers his grace upon you, that weakness becomes powerless. That weakness becomes one that has no bearing as far as doesn't affect the bearing of the vision that God has for you. Just like he told uh, Paul that my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, though you could have a weakness, when my grace is over the weakness, it will not affect the direction of the vision I have cast for you. Hallelujah. God requires of us a lot of humility. That humility should be something, it should be a quality that we work on. All of us have our own 
stints in the place of pride. All of us struggle with pride over and over again in one way or other. But God is telling us that we should really vacate the place of pride and embrace the place of humility. If you feel that you are haughty, if you feel that you are lifted up, if you feel that you're so proud, just know that pride is not an asset before God. Pride is not an asset before God. God had to work on Naaman's pride in so many ways for him to come to the place of his, uh, of his healing. And therefore, let's work and let's pray to God that we will have humility as the big force in our lives overcoming pride. And that is also possible. And also, sisters and brothers, we cannot predict how God is going to act. Once you commit your weakness to God, you cannot predict how he is going to work. All you know is that he will work, but you can't predict how he's going to do, how he's going to do it. You find that Naaman was angry because he had thought out how it's going to go. Now listen to what he says in verse 11. I thought, now Naaman was away, went away angry and said, I thought that he would, that is a prophet, I thought that the prophet would surely come out, look at the way he says, he, the prophet will come out, he will stand, and he will call on the name of the Lord, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. He already had a method that he had imagined God would act, but God has if there are 8 billion people in the world, we can say that God has 8 billion ways of working. And therefore, you cannot predict him. You cannot cast his action on a particular formula. All you know is that your faith will bear results. All you know is that once you commit your weakness to God, he is going to act upon it in ways that you may not even have predicted. But one thing is for sure that God desires to invade your weakness and from that weakness bring out a testimony of healing, a testimony of refreshing to the glory of God and also to your joy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up for prayer. Loving God, we are humbled before you to know that our weaknesses do not take us away from you, but our weaknesses form the attraction that pulls you towards us. And we thank you for the many times we have cried to you to change us. And you have changed us. And now, Lord, we pray for ourselves at this particular time. Inspired by this account of Naaman, who had such a complicated story of weakness. But loving God, finally, he declared and said, I now know that there is a God in Israel. Now, Lord God, I pray for your children who are in this gathered place and those who are also online, lifting up our weaknesses to you. Lifting up our weaknesses to you, O oh God. Some weaknesses could be self-made. Others could be incidental, O oh God. Some are public, others are private. Some we can do something about, others we don't know what to do with. But all these weaknesses, oh God, we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. And we pray, oh God, that your power that comes through even those places that we are so weak, that loving God, your power shall come in and minister strength. Lord God, I pray that you shall minister strength, oh God, in those zones of weakness. Minister your strength, oh God. Minister your strength, O oh God. And where there are strongholds, we pray that you shall minister your power. Minister your power, O oh God. 
where we need a shifting, Lord, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit shall bring a shift from the flesh place to the place of the Spirit. Father, Lord God, weaknesses inhibit us in so many ways. Weaknesses have become uh, but things that really affect our identity. And we feel we have no confidence sometimes because of our stories, because of where we are at. But loving God, it is your desire that we stand confident, O oh God, stand confident before you as people who are changed by you, as children of the Most High God. And therefore I pray, O oh God, that this day, that this, your children will benefit from the power of transformation, from the resurrection power that brings a newness in our lives. Lord God, let no weakness stand before your grace, O oh God. Let every weakness be confronted by your love. Let every weakness, O oh God, be confronted by your grace and by your great kindness. And they, may these weaknesses, O oh God, come tumbling down. And let there be a testimony in every story here that there is a God who loves us. There is a God who is full of all power. And we shall say, we were weak, but in the Lord we have gained strength. Let it be so, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's be seated in the presence of God. Praise God. It's now time to give to us the ministry of our Lord. And uh, those who have the envelopes can drop them in the two boxes. We have uh, one for tithes and the other one for thanksgiving. And the ones who do not uh, who, um, who do want to give through the table number, they are going to be put on our screens. And also the account number will be shown on our screens. I'm going to invite the praise team to give us a number as we continue to give to us the Lord. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You got times and seasons in your head. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the call to you. But you have chosen to call us your own. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You got time, you got time, and seasons in your head. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you come for life. Oh, 
thank you this morning for giving us an opportunity to offer a part of what you have given to us, Lord, for the expansion of your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for how you have sustained us even during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And Father, we have seen your glorious deeds as you continue restoring us, Lord, we thank you for the good health you have given to each one of us, and Lord, also for the peace that is in our families, and Lord, we pray that what we have given for your kingdom today, Lord, you bless it. We also pray that those areas that have not already been opened, Lord, because of the problem which we have in the country, Lord, we pray that they continue to be open to Lord so that we can continue enjoying your gracious gifts, Lord, and we can be happy, Lord, telling you thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do to us, Lord. We have faith that you are going to do a lot, Lord, because you have been with us, you are with us now, and you will be with us forever. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. service is over. I who was leading or is, my name is Rosalind Jeliga Kunga, and I'm saved. I will call upon our minister to give us the benediction as we take the Bible into the first tree.
again thank you for being in the house of the Lord and as you can see we are doing our very best to make sure that we are safe in this season and so do encourage uh, your friends your neighbors your family members to uh, come to gathered worship uh, because uh, we are doing our very best to make sure that we are safe uh, in this particular time uh, and again God bless you abundantly uh, and even as you go to the week and the things ahead of you, may God's grace be upon you. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for a time of being in your house, those who are gathered here and those who are online. And we pray that indeed from the time of praise, the time of prayer, the time of your word proclaimed, there shall be refreshing and strengthening, O oh God, that comes to us. We pray that we shall keep growing in your grace. We shall keep moving on up, O oh God. We shall keep in the rhythm of the kingdom that grows to become a big tree where even birds can pitch their nests. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to each one of you. May the Lord turn his face toward each one of you in favor and give you his peace, give you his power, keep you in his plan, give you his prosperity and his protection today and forevermore. Amen, amen. There is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. There is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. To be won, give me power every hour to be true. There is a race, there is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Oh, there is a race, there is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Every hour to be true. Oh, there is a race. I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power. Every hour to be true. My God, there is a race. I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me. That I must run, there are victories to be won. 